this is Mr. J. Let's go through the congruent triangles guided notes. All right, so over on the right hand side here, we have two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Let's say that we know that they're congruent. We absolutely know that they're congruent. They're stated as being congruent. Well, the first thing we can do is we can start marking then the three pairs of corresponding and congruent sides. So let's do that. Let's do that in red. All right, here we go. So that means that AB corresponds and is congruent to DE. All right, also, that means that BC, two tick marks, is corresponding and congruent to EF, and the last pair of sides is AC, three tick marks, is congruent to DF. Okay, next, in green, let's mark the three pairs of corresponding and congruent angles. So that means that angle A is congruent and corresponds to angle D with a single swooshy mark there. Let's do two angle swooshy marks as I call them uh, and set B congruent to E because it corresponds right. And then finally, let's see if we can squeeze three swooshy marks in here at C and make sure that we have it set congruent to and, and corresponding to F. All right, so that means that all three pairs of corresponding and uh, sides are congruent as well, and all three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent as well. So then we can write it alge algebraically, and I've already kind of started this here, okay? And so that means that I can say that AB is congruent to DE, and you could list that, do the same thing for the other two pairs of sides. Next, I'm going to choose this angle. I'm intentionally trying, trying to choose something that's not just angle uh, ABC here to um, talk about how the order matters. So if I decide to start up here at uh, angle B and name angle B, I've got a couple of choices. I can go BAC or I can go BCA. But if I choose BAC, then I have to state it as being congruent to EDF because that's the correct order of uh, the sides uh, that, that make up uh, the sides and the angle, right? All right. So finally, now that we know that these two triangles are congruent, we can write what's called a triangle congruency statement. OK, so in this case, if you want to, you can choose a different order, but I'm going to not reinvent the wheel here. And I'm just going to say, OK, now that I know that all six, uh, all three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent, all three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent, then I'm just going to say that the triangle BAC is congruent to triangle EDF. And again, I intentionally chose that order. You could choose any order you want. You just have to make sure that it matches when you choose the first order from the first triangle to the second. Okay? All right, so that's pretty simple. Next, we have this acronym that we're going to look at a little bit more as we get, as we move from just doing basic triangle congruency into writing down what you're thinking as you do this into what's called two column proofs. OK, and so we've got this acronym here and it's very sort of straightforward, kind of stating the obvious. And that is, the acronym is CPCTC. And what that stands for, as I've got it written out here, is corresponding parts, which we've already talked about up here. Right. We've got three pairs there. We've got three pairs of there. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles, which we've stated here. Right. Uh, of, of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent again so it's just kind of stating the obvious and i'll explain why at a later lesson why that's going to be important as we start doing two column proofs okay so let's use these examples up here with abc to do number one and two in our practice all right so we already have restated uh triangle abc is congruent to def different order there but that's no big deal we know what corresponds and we know what's congruent so that means that bc has got to be congruent to what ef up here right so that's what our graph says let's go ahead and put some a uh, little uh line segment symbols above those all right moving along number two if triangle abc is congruent to triangle def then that means angle a is congruent to angle d OK, uh, nothing wrong with using one letter from time to time, but the convention would be to use three letters, right? Like we did uh, up there in uh, writing out examples of corresponding parts. Now, then let's do this logically without a graph. So we have cat is congruent to dog. These are two triangles. So that means AC here is going to be congruent to OD, right? Using the same order. All right. Now, then let's move on to a different example. Number four. Triangle BAT, B -A -T, BAT is equal to M-O-N. 
All right. So over here, we know that triangle, we're trying to find the angle that is congruent to ONM. So ONM goes like that right there. So I have to write down angle ATB. So they go angle ATB is the correct order. All right. Of the letters. So MO, MO is over here. So that looks like that's going to be congruent to BA. Again, add the uh, line segment symbols there. And then finally, NM. NM from here to here. So that means that's going to be TB. And we're good to go. Again, add the uh, line segment symbols. All right. So now then, this is where it gets a lot harder. Okay. In this first example, we're going to find the triangle congruency statement for BCA. So let me go here on this triangle and trace BCA, that order. And paying attention to the order of the tick marks of the sides and the swooshy marks for the angles and stuff like that is really, really important. All right. Well, if I'm going to write this out for the correct order over here, well, the first thing that I notice is, is that I've started here at letter B down here on the bottom of the triangle, if you will, that doesn't have any markings on it. So that means that I've got to start up here at E. So then I go E, G, that's a G there, E, G, F. And basically what I've traced, again, is um, from no uh, markings on the angle through the single tick mark for the side, the double swooshy for the angle down the side that's got the double tick mark, and then the single swooshy for the angle. Okay, and I have to retrace that. So then, so what does that become? That becomes E, G, F. Okay, there we go. E, G, F. All right. So now that we're going to go from this triangle here, let me erase this real quick. We're going to go from this triangle over here on the right, and we're going to figure out what the correct congruency statement is if we choose a different order. All right, so here we go. G, F, E. So I'm at G. I go to F, and I go to E. So that looks like I start here at the double sushi. It's got to start up here at C, and I go down the double tick mark side. So I got to go to A and then down to B. So it's got to be CAB. So it's congruent to triangle CAB. All right, moving along, looking good. Last couple here. All right, uh, still kind of hard. JKN. So I'm working on the left hand triangle. So I'm going to start at J. I'm going to go to K and I'm going to go to N. So that means I got to start down here at M on the other side of the triple tick mark on the sides. And I've got to go down that triple tick mark and then I got to trace down the double tick mark. So it's going to be MKL, right? So triangle MKL is congruent to triangle JKM. All right, last one. Uh, triangle CBD. CBD right here. Boom. CBD is congruent to ABD. Triangle ABD. Oops, my bad. All right, we got that. So let me point out a couple more things with this one here with triangle congruency. Let's let's jump ahead a little bit. Let's go back to the last lesson that we did where we we're talking about uh, the different types of angles. And we said that there's this angle bisector. Well, if we have this angle right here marked with two two swooshies congruent to that angle right there, that certainly looks like that we could come over here and say that BD is an angle bisector of angle, what is that, ADC, so angle ADC, all right, and my bad, uh, probably should have written out the word angle there instead of using the symbol, but we can tell that that's an angle bisector because ADC is cut into two congruent angles, all right, last thing, as we get ready to start talking about the triangle congruency thing, this is going to be one of the first things that I'm going to talk about in just a moment. Let's use this example here. Well, we know that these are right triangles, and your eyes tell you that it sure looks like that DC is congruent to um, DA. Well, this is going to be a really, really bad situation here if we go do that, because anytime we start making markings on, putting markings on triangle congruency uh, diagrams to try to figure it out, we cannot, under any circumstances, assume, just because of right triangles, that these two hypotenuses are going to be congruent. We'd have to have some sort of geometry rule, like let's say maybe the Pythagorean theorem or something like that to be able to tell us that. Okay, so again, remember we were talking at a moment, I'm going to re reiterate this many, many times online and in class, that you cannot assume something. I'm going to give you a property sheet that's going to show you that you're going to have probably eight or ten or so important properties that you've got to be able to spot, as I call, in the wild, to be able to find these things. All right, so last thing here. <clears throat> let's go ahead and preview here a little bit. Well, if I said, hey, let's pull ADB apart from CBD, wouldn't you agree if we split them apart that they're both going to have that 
shared side there right there, they would both have a side that's called DB. Well, if one triangle has uh, a side called DB and the other one has a uh, side called DB, and they came from the original length from a side from a bigger triangle, then that means that they've got to be congruent. Logically, they've got to be congruent. And again, uh, previewing just a little bit, we are going to call that the reflexive property. All right, the reflexive property. Okay, and that's a known property. So as we property, my bad, as we move through this, anytime you see that, like vertical angles, when we talked about the other day, you can mark vertical angles congruent, right? You can mark them congruent. You know they're congruent. So again, this is reinforcing the fact that there's only certain types of things, again, about eight or ten different types of properties that you're going to learn about and everything that, um, that you know that you can mark. And my bad, I'm uh, spelling, misspelling reflexive there. Let's try that again. R E F L reflects if right there. Oh my gosh, I did it third time. Reflex if. Whew, math teacher. Okay, so let's continue with the second page of notes here. As you can see, there's five different triangle congruency rules or postulates. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. So I've drawn up a known good example for each one. We're going to say that the very beginning of each one of these explaining that these this is given information, it's on the graph, and we're going to use it to... Um, you know, talk about how each one is going to be, uh, the, you know, talk about the specifics of each rule. All right, but before we do that, we want to make sure that there's four things we've got to keep in mind when we do this. First, you can't add any markings to the geometry diagram unless there is a property about the angles or sides that you know that make them congruent. Like, for example, we know vertical angles are congruent. So you'll see examples like that. We know that corresponding and alternate interior angles are congruent. You'll see examples like that. We learned uh, at, on the first page of notes that there's this new property called the reflexive or shared side. Okay, all right. So, so that means you can't assume that just because your eyes think that uh, the I, eyes make you think that the sides and angles are congruent, that they are. You can't assume that. Okay, there's got to be a property that lets you put these markings on the paper on your diagram. You can't double skip. We'll talk about that more in a moment. You can skip one angle or you can skip one side, but you can't skip one of each or two or more, all right? Uh, the ordering of the markings matters, whether it's the sides and angle letters that we're going to put here or the actual letters of the vertices when you go to write down the uh, triangle congruency rule. All this stuff matters in terms of the order. You'll see that more in a moment. All right, so in this first example, we have three pairs of corresponding and congruent sides that are marked congruent. When this is the case, it's the easiest to spot, and we know that the two um, triangles are congruent because of the side side postulate side 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 postulate all right next you have the side angle side notice that before we get started there notice that in the side 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 that's the example clearly where when you go from one side to the next side to the third side if you're tracing it you're skipping angles right well skipping one angle is okay this next one side angle side you're not skipping anything. You're going from, as the de definition says, you're going from one pair of corresponding sides to a pair of included or sandwiched angles in between the two sides. And if you have this side angle side situation, then you know that they're congruent. So let's put some S's and A's here. So you have side angle side, and you have side angle side, all right? And that clearly spells side angle side. Well, we have this order problem, and it's a little bit better demonstrated um, when we do the angle 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 side angle in just a second. So let's move on to that one. So in this case right here, uh, you have got a two pairs of corresponding angles and a pair of included corresponding sides. You can see very clearly here, we go this way right here from angle, side, angle, which brings up uh, a good point that I haven't mentioned yet, and that is, is that you always, when you start naming the rule, you always want to start at uh, one of the letters that's at the outside and not in the inside. So you'd want to start here and go there, you get angle, side, angle, or you could start here and go there and you still get angle, side, angle, right? So let's go put it over here, angle, side, angle, and let's don't start, start in the middle and see what happens. Uh, let, I'm sorry, let's don't start at an end point and let's see what happens. Well, if we start here at this middle uh, letter and go side, angle, angle, right? Side, angle, side. Well, side, angle, angle is the same thing as SAA, but the problem is we're up here trying to prove angle, side, angle. And the big problem is this. If I start here at this S and go side, angle, angle, 
you have just skipped that side, that angle, and that side. That's a triple skip. You can't do that. So in this example here, the only one that's going to work is the original one, like we saw over here, starting at the end point A or A, and going uh, clockwise or counterclockwise, and you clearly get the angle side angle, but the side angle angle does not work. Okay, next, angle angle side. So here we're going from an angle to an angle. We're skipping a side there, no big deal, and then we're finishing up with that side right there. Tracing or writing down the letters for the exact same order, angle angle side, shows that that works. All right, we're going to have the same problem here. Um, let's say that you've started here in the middle and you go this way like that right there. Well, that's angle side angle but then doing it there creates the dreaded double skip cannot do the double skip again you can only skip one side or one angle at a time so in this example here the only one's going to work is angle angle side or it's equivalent rule side angle side uh, side angle angle with just the uh, letters uh, flipped okay last one hypotenuse leg only works in right triangles okay clearly you have to know where the hypotenuse is in any right triangle the hypotenuse is the longest side and it's the one that is opposite the right angle okay so that's the hypotenuse right there the other two sides are called legs uh, special names there so that's a leg and that's a leg so in this case right here you've got hypotenuse leg okay and so we can say for certain that they're congruent based on that rule all right so quick review to add markings you've got to have a geometry property vertical angles Altered and inter angles, those sorts of things. It gets more complicated when we start pushing the triangles together. Okay, we'll see examples like that soon. You can't assume sides or angles are congruent. You just can't. Just because they look congruent, you can't do that. Next, you can't do the double skip. Skipping one side or one angle is okay, but you can't do the double skip. And finally, the order of the markings and the letters matter.